Microsoft Research brought together leaders in the exciting field of machine learning at a major summit in Paris. We are pleased to offer research and focus interviews with participants at the Microsoft Research Machine Learning Summit 2013. Nowhere is the promise of machine learning greater than in the area of healthcare. I'm joined by Microsoft researcher Dr. Sylvia Chiapa, who is going to fill us in on the exciting machine learning approach she's using in the realm of medicine. Welcome, Sylvia. Hi. Sylvia, so I understand that you are using machine learning to look at problems in lung functions, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Basically, I've been working on a medical project which is about um, using model-based machine learning to estimate the health status of uh, the lungs from lung function tests, uh, specifically from spirometry tests. So you're looking at more than one factor and how they affect the lungs individually and in combination. Uh, so how does machine learning enter in? Well, I think uh, this uh, was the first time in which machine learning and uh, probabilistic modeling was used to um, um, analyze uh, the effect of factors. Um, and in our, in my opinion, this enables us to, to overcome some of the limitations of previous studies. Uh, for example, to, due to the difficulty of collecting large sample size data, most previous studies were uh, really focusing on one factor only or uh, on a small age range. And so concurrence of factors and um, an anal analysis over um, the entire adult too are still uh, rare and missing. So with our machine learning approach, which we could analyze all factors and combination of, of the factors um, over the entire adult too. And the key was really to um, have um, a model in which information uh, among uh, factors and uh, among ages is shared. So this is one, uh, I think, one of the advantages in using in using machine learning. Um, the other is the fact, the, the probabilistic nature of of the modeling, which enable us to to deal with uncertainty in the data and also provide um, uncertainty about the the estimate about the effects, uh, which is quite uh, helpful when uh, when dealing with little amount of data, as in our in our case. Um, and as a, yeah, I think uh, also f another um, advantage in, uh, in in using machine learning um, and uh, model-based machine learning was uh, the fact that we could express uh, the um, effect in terms of biological age, um, which which can give a more interpretable way of uh, understanding the effect of the factors. And uh, yeah, that's. Uh, um, I think uh, the reason why we, we use machine learning and uh, in, in, in this work. That's interesting. So your approach allows you to study the effects of three variables. You said smoking, COPD, and asthma alone and in various combinations. Are there some other unique aspects? Well, yeah, the fact that we uh, express this uh, effect in terms of biological age. So the idea was to uh, create a model that can tell uh, how old uh, the, the lungs of individuals which are affected by, by asthma or other lung diseases are with respect to healthy individuals. This is a unique aspect of... Uh, uh, in the past, um, individual biological age was used to uh, as a more effective way of uh, uh, expressing uh, impairment of the lungs uh, with the hope that it would uh, uh, be more effective in convincing people that smoke to quit. We have used uh, the biological age of the lungs at the more uh, global level to estimate the average effect of uh, asthma, CUPD and, and smoking. Um, Another um, interesting aspect of our research, I think, that differentiated from, from the past is the use of a probabilistic modeling, which enable us to um, take um, uh, into account the, and deal with uh, uncertainty in the data and also enable us to uh, produce an uncertainty estimate uh, in the estimate of the of the effect. And this is quite helpful, especially when uh, you have to deal with little data uh, in our case. Now, you have a slide that actually shows these results, right? Can you show us that? 
So basically, in this slide, I show the biological age uh, versus chronological age 50 for healthy individuals and for individuals that have asthma, COPD, and uh, um, or smokes, or um, that are affected by all combination of these factors. And in our um, model, the biological age is a random variable with a certain distribution, and what uh, we show in this figure is the mean in white, um, the center of, the, of each, each rectangle is the mean of the of the distribution, and the height of the rectangle is the cover 90% of the probability of uh, the, the distribution, so gives a measure of uncertainty in the estimate. So we can see that uncertainty is quite high, but we can also uh, still um, see some interesting effect. For example, people, individuals that have asthma and smoke have a bi biological age of around uh, 58, uh, 57 years while people that have uh, asthma and uh, smoke uh, have a, a biological age which is much higher, of uh, 67 around. So we can see that the combined effect of smoking and uh, having asthma is much more detrimental than the single effect of smoking and having asthma. And uh, this was an interesting aspect that, um, of, of this research, the finding that this uh, um, co-occurrence of effect have a much more detrimental effect than single um, single factors. And the, if you see in the figure, the the, the worst uh, of um, the cases really for individuals that smoke, have asthma, and COPD, for which uh, the biological age reaches almost 80 years. That is very interesting. Now, where did that data come from? Uh, the data came from the Department of Twin Research and Genetic Epidemiology uh, at King's College London. Basically, uh, the department has collected the largest uh, UK uh, adult twin uh, registry. It's a, a cohort of around 12,000 uh, individuals, which um, encompasses uh, clinical, um, physiological, behavioral data. And basically, we have um, uh, analyze uh, a subset of this uh, data set, the, the one that is related to the lung, um, yeah, the lung function. I'm curious, what has been your biggest motivation in pursuing this research? My goal has always been uh, to to use uh, machine learning and my skill and, and uh, specifically probabilistic modeling to um, solve some, some real-world application. I'm particularly interested in, in the medical area. And I, I thought this, uh, in, especially in medical projects, there is a, a huge need of uh, um, uh, trying to attack the, the, the problems in a different way. So in most um, um, medical projects, uh, the classical statistics is still uh, largely used. Um, I believe that, that machine learning could, uh, could give um, an improvement, and uh, I wanted to, to give my contribution on this, on this project. So I've got to ask, what's next for you? Additional research into lung functions or maybe a whole new area of exploration in machine learning? Well, there is a little bit of work to do still on this on this project, in the sense that, uh, as I said, I would like to make the, the model available, and this requires uh, some, some work. I would also like to extend it to take into account uh, the fact that our data, I didn't say it, but it's um, twin data, and uh, also um, it, it encompasses it. Uh, um, uh, it was a temporal data. I didn't discuss this aspect, but there are little things to, to do still to complete this research, but then I will, I will definitely move, I think, in a month or so to, to a new project, which um, I'm thinking about. Machine learning that can figure out the age of your lungs. It's obvious that machine learning has tremendous possibilities in the healthcare domain. And I want to thank our guest, Dr. Sylvia Chiapa, for calling in to discuss these exciting developments. Thanks, Doc. Thank you very much.